The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. Next, best-selling author Stormy O'Mardian describes the power of praying through fear. You can't be all God called you to be. You can't do all God called you to do because fear is going to limit what you can do and what you can accomplish. And, and He wants you to be free of it. That's why He says, He promises, I have not given you that. I have not given you that fear. Get close to me. Spend time with me. You know, and worship me. Read my word. It's all about liberating you. Yeah. Hi, I'm Sheila Walsh. Welcome to Life Today. I am so grateful that I have a guest on today's program. God has used this woman so powerfully around the world. Her life was incredibly, unbearably difficult to start with. Um, but now when, when you see the fruit springing up, I mean, it's almost like I looked at a map of the world last night just because I wanted to get this perspective. And it was just like seeing this, these little flames catching fire all around the world um, because of what God has done through her life and, and the power of prayer. So please welcome my guest with me, this um, Stormy O'Martin. So grateful you're here. Oh, thank you, Sheila. I'm so grateful to be here. And I love the vision of the little flames all over. That is, that's exciting. Yeah, it really oh, is. is. Yes. Because I think one of the things I've, I, I put out a little thing in my social media saying, if when it comes to prayer, what do you struggle most with? And within... 15 minutes, I had over 500 responses. Yes. But it was interesting, the things that people said. Um, I feel like I just repeat myself over and over. Mm. Um, I get distracted. Um, why bother praying if God knows already what he's going <laughs> yeah. to do? Do you get some of that kind of stuff too? Oh, I do. I do. I'm not, I'm not laughing at them. I'm laughing with them because that was that's so common. Um, you know, I used to feel that way too. And um, the thing is, God knows everything, but he wants you to partner with him. Right. He wants you. He, it's, he answers the prayers, but you've got to pray them. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's the thing, the way he set it up. You yeah. know, and most people don't realize that their prayers have power. They think I'm just, well, it's kind of going out into space and maybe kind of dropping off, you know, but no, they're powerful. I mean, because mm -hmm. you're talking to the God of the universe and, and, and sometimes I believe people don't think of it that way, yeah. that it's just all coming from them and, and, you know, who knows if he hears, you know, God hears. If yeah. you know him, if you received him. He hears you and he will answer, but it's in his way and in his timing. Yeah. And so um, and that's why I wrote all these books on prayer, because I don't think it's boring. <laughs> I've heard, oh, prayer's boring. How can you say that? You're talking to the God of the universe. He hears you. But has that been a, a, a changing journey for you? I mean, when you started off, did you understand in the beginning how powerful your prayers were? I did because I saw answers. Yeah, well, see, that's, and, yeah. And I, I did because I was such a mess of just about anything I prayed was going to get answered because, you know, <laughs> God has mercy. Let's work with this woman. Yes, yes <laughs> let's, let's help her in any way we can. And, but he, um, I saw such amazing answers to prayer because I had been, you know, as long as I could remember, had severe depression and anxiety mm. and fear was a big thing. That was my whole life. If I summed up my life back then, fear, that guided, guided everything. And um, so I was in such pain and when I went after I'd received the Lord and everything and I was married to my husband and and I still had the depression and I'm thinking mm. okay I've got the Lord I've got a husband who loves me why am I still yeah. depressed and why am I still sad and brokenhearted and and um, anxious you know about everything and so I went to the church where these pastor wives pastor's wives were there who were gifted in knowledge of the scripture and what God wanted to do in our lives and what he has for us and they knew how to pray in power and so I they had me um, one pastor's wife had me pray um, I'm sorry fast and pray mm. big difference yeah. <laughs> and so three days I had to fast and pray wow. three days and hope I didn't die in the night, you know. <laughs> and so I went back to, the, and she said, and she fasted with me. So it wasn't just me. And I thought that was amazing that yeah. someone would fast and deny themselves food for a stranger like that. Mm -hmm. And I, I just couldn't believe it. And anyway, so she prayed for me 
I had to confess all my unforgiveness toward my mother. I had to, uh, you know, confess sins that were really um, that I had committed that were really uh, tormenting me. And um, I, when they, when she prayed for me, I felt that entire depression lift. Wow! I was, and, and, all, and uh, you know, all of that uh, anxiety, it all lifted. I could feel it lifting off my shoulders like a weight. And I will never forget it because it changed my life forever. Because that from then on, I thought, if God would do this for me, how much more does He want to do for everybody else? Wow. And that, and I just that from then on, I my goal was to seek God and learn to pray. Teach me how to pray, God. Help me to pray in power, like You want me to. And it was just that constant desire for that to see answers to prayer for other people. Mm -hmm. And that's why I had all these prayer groups in my house. Praying for people for different reasons, you know, mm. praying for kids, praying for people's children, praying for marriages, praying for ministries, you know, different things. And um, seeing God answer all these prayers, yeah. that's why I don't think prayer is boring. I just, I want to tell people it's not boring. Believe me, talking to the God of the universe and seeing him answer your prayer is not boring. <laughs> Sounds like a no-brainer, really. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it, it is. Believe me when I say that. <laughs> you know, one of the things I've been studying a lot recently on prayer, and I, I think it, I found it fascinating that the fragrance of heaven is prayer. Yes. That these golden bowls of the yes. prayers of the yes. saints, saints. Is that wonderful? Like an incense before yes. the Lord. Yes, it's like your prayers are lasting. They don't just pray, you don't just pray and it just drops off a cliff in, or mm -hmm. evaporates into thin air. They last. Your prayers last. You could pray a prayer now, you know, a, a powerful prayer about saving your, God saving your son or something like that. Whatever. And, and you maybe go on to, to heaven and you don't see it answered, but that doesn't mean your prayer is right. not going to get answered. That's a huge point. It is. Yeah. It is. Your prayers are lasting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember growing up in my little church in Scotland, mm -hmm. this man who prayed for his wife um, for years. And, and I would go to the prayer meeting with my mom every Tuesday night mm -hmm. and he would pray with tears rolling down his face. She gave her life to Christ at his memorial service. Oh. So he would not know until Joe. she walked through the gates to join oh, him, the I, power of prayer. That is so wonderful. That's, that's exactly it. And I yeah. wanted other women and men too, of course, um, to be excited yeah. about praying, about getting into God's presence and, and, and worshiping him and praising him and, and praying to him, communicating with God, you know, and talking and listening and, and seeing God move and seeing God answer. And I believe women all over the world Men too. I don't mean to be leaving men out. It's sure. just that I've written a lot of books for women. Um, that we can be a movement of prayer. And, Absolutely. And prayer, these prayers can be answered Absolutely. in a powerful way. There could not be a more <clears throat> timely book than your new book, mm. The Power of Praying Through Fear. I mean, that. when I think of everything that's going on in our nation, yes, yes. what led to concentrating and focusing on this specific well, issue? Well, it's been on my heart. I mean, there's so many things to be afraid of. I mean, there's, it's just it's just an epidemic. And I, I would get to where I would be saying hi to someone, like like an acquaintance, you know, not someone even know well, saying, oh, how, how are you doing today, you know? And they would say, oh, I'm so afraid. Wow. And, and I mean, and I said, oh, I'm so sorry. What, what are, what, I mean, there's many things to be afraid of, but what, Mm -hmm. Are you specifically afraid of most, you know? And they would tell me, you know, I mean, it would be different for different people. And they're afraid to go into a public place. They're afraid to their kids in school. They're afraid wow. that they're going to get a bad diagnosis from the doctor. They're afraid of all kinds of things. It's just endless, the fear. And I thought, you know, I know. I said, God, I, I know that you didn't give us a spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. And when fear overtakes our life and controls our life, it's a spirit of fear in charge, yeah. you know? And I want you in charge. You, you, you've you, given us love and power and a sound mind. Yes. And I want people, and, and myself included, to lay claim to that love, your love, your power, and the sound mind you have for us. Mm -hmm. And so that was the basis for this book. Yeah, it was interesting when mm -hmm. I was, um, my husband's father, my father-in-law, his dad was um, used to own a little store, and somebody broke in, and they locked him in one of those barrels. They they nailed it shut, oh, wow. and he was left abandoned. He thought he was going to die, yeah. and it so impacted the rest of his life. He lived perpetually in fear. And one mm. of the things I think is true about fear is it's paralyzing. Yes, 
Exactly. It stops you from being mm -hmm. who God has called you that's to be. Exa that's exactly what I put in there. You can't be all God called you to be. You can't do all God called you to do because fear is going to limit what you can do and what you're going to accomplish. And, and he wants you to be free of it. That's why he says, he promises, I have not given you that. I have not given you that fear. Get close to me. Spend time with me. Um, and worship me. Read my word. It's all about liberating you, yeah. you know, from fear. Yeah. And one of the things I think is an important distinction is it, you can live in this world knowing that some things are going to happen that are not good, but yes. not live in fear. Yes. How do you get to that place where you think, okay, you know, something could happen to my child at school or mm -hmm. I could get a bad diagnosis. How do you live with that and not be afraid? How does that, how do you shift? Well, you have to get close to God, which means spending time with him. It means um, living his way you know, to, to the best of your ability. It means um, spending time in worship that's really important because when you worship God, it's like a, a funnel that he pours into you himself. He pours his love and his peace and his power and all these things like a funnel. And when you spend time with them and praying and saying, God, I'm really concerned about this. This is really giving me, making me afraid. And I'm so afraid of my, with my children at school mm -hmm. that something's going to happen to them, you know. Or I'm afraid I'm going to get a terrible diagnosis from the doctor. I mean, all of these things. But take it, whatever you're afraid of, take it to him in prayer. Don't just say, um, um, you know, I'll, I'll just ignore it and maybe it'll go away. Because <laughs> it'll always be there. Yeah. And so take it to him. Say, you know, God, protect my children in school. You know, uh, help us to do the right thing with our bodies, God, so that we don't get into trouble. But God, we, we know that you are the healer. And, and Lord, I pray that you would you would keep us well and heal us when we're not. And yeah. I mean, all of these things. And I remember thinking when, uh, I, when I first, my Power of a Praying Parent book mm -hmm. came out, I went around to the different schools and you know, talked, did a talk on the power of praying parent, and then had women in the school have a, you know, organize a prayer meeting. Sometimes they can meet at the school, wow. sometimes they met in their homes, and whatever, pray for that school. Pray, every, if you're a parent with kids in school, pray for that school, pray that, that no weapon formed against it will prosper. I mean, all of these things that you can pray, and just be a praying woman. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? but that's, I mean, it's kind of fascinating and challenging to me when I look at my own life. I mean, I gave my life to Christ when I was 11. Mm. But for many years, I lived with tremendous depression and fear. I ended yeah. up diagnosed with severe clinical depression. Mm. I ended up in a psychiatric hospital. Mm. Yeah. And my father committed suicide in a psychiatric hospital. Oh, wow. So my fear was always whatever was in him is in me. Yes, yes. But I, I, I mean, I stand too. with yeah. you, Stormy, knowing <laughs> that... Um, that the power of the word of God can break all those yokes yes, and those yes. things that you think. So yes. many, I'm thinking of some viewers thinking, well, this is just inevitable. But in Christ, yeah. it's not. No, it's not. You know, exactly. You can break those family curses and, and just say, I just you know, refuse. Or I, I, my mother is mentally ill, too, you know, and, and very frightening. And so I had that spirit of fear on me, you know, from far back as I could remember. But I prayed for my kids that it would not come on them. Yeah. I was afraid that, it would, mm -hmm. that I'd inherit it, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I just prayed for them that they would never inherit anything like that. And, and that, I mean, just constantly praying and, and they didn't and I didn't either. And so I, prayer is really powerful. And so if you're afraid, whatever you're afraid of, start praying. I know you think, well, my, I've got this little prayer and it, this problem is so big mm -hmm. and how can we control everything? You, you don't have to control anything. Let God, invite God to be in control. Let him be in control of your life. Let him be in control of your school. But these women praying in these schools, mm -hmm. I'm telling you, not one of them we haven't lost a kid yet, wow. and, and I know that their prayers are powerful, wow. you know, and I, I'm, I'm saying that prayer works. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. And, so I'm thinking yeah. of, um, I know some of the letters yeah. I get from some of our viewers. I'm thinking of somebody listening in and watching and thinking, I believe that. I want to do it, but I don't know where to start. Yes. You know, because a lot of people think, I don't know what to say. I'm not a prayer warrior. What would you say to somebody who says, where do I start? Buy my books, okay? Exactly. <laughs> 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 no, I gave up. I gave my life, poured my life into these books. I did, yeah. and I wrote them for you. I want you to know how to pray that because I saw I, the, one of the most shocking things to me is after I'd seen all these answers to prayer is that people weren't praying. I mean, I'm talking believers. A lot of believers weren't praying, and I thought, oh, 
this has got to change. Yes. And so I, I would, you know, organize prayer groups in, in other places and then in other people's homes and in other, um, you know, states and other mm -hmm. countries and say, organize, just, you know, where two or more are gathered. God says he's right there. He's in the midst of you. You, you know, I'm mm -hmm. there. If you've got two or more, I'm there, he says. So, so invite him, you know, invite someone else and invite him in prayer to be a part of your, your prayer group. You, all it takes is one other person wow. and you can add as many as you want, you know? Wow. And so um, it, it, it's, it's just starting to do it, saying, God, I'm, I'm not good at this. I don't know how, where to start or where to pray. And, and usually you can start right in the Word. You know, yeah. and if you read any of the Word, it's gonna inspire you to pray about something, you know? And one of the things I love is that, my understanding that like the Psalms were Jesus' prayer book. You know, yeah. and we can pray the Psalms back to God yes. as well. Oh, and yes. I find that it's almost yeah. like God gives us words then yes. to be able to know how to pray back. Yes. And, and I love that. Yes. Is there any way that God uses fear for good purpose? Yes, yes. Oh, yes. When, <clears throat> when fear, fear can be good or bad, mostly bad if it's controlling your life, good if it's drawing you close to God. Mm -hmm. if, if you are afraid of something and it brings you to your knees, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Or maybe you're afraid, oh, I don't, I don't feel like I should be driving um, into town tonight or something, and, and there on the road is a huge accident. I mean, there's things yeah. that mm -hmm. like that that happen, have happened to me where I thought, oh, no, I've got to, I'm not going to go today. You yeah. know? And sure enough, there, there was some horrible thing. And, and if, if you're constantly praying and constantly in tune with the Lord, and he, if he lets you be afraid, and you know of something, ask him, God, is this, is this, are you trying to tell me something with this? Yeah. And he will. Pay He'll attention. Yeah. Pay attention. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so well, that's when it's good. Yeah, I, I totally see that. That it can either drive you further away from God, or yes. it can push you on your knees, yes. your face before him. I love that. Yes. What do you say to somebody who thinks that you know, actually, I'm doing pretty well with most things, but the thing I actually am afraid of is death. What do you say to that? Oh, I used to have that too. I used to be, well, that's, you know, when I was a new believer and I really coming out of this horrible life that I, that I was living. Um, but as, as I got closer and closer to the Lord, um, I began to see, you know, everything in his word about what heaven's like and what, what that transition is like. And, and, um, and I think trusting God's word to, mm -hmm. to speak to you and just trusting his spirit to speak to you about that too, because he's going to be there. Yeah. You know, he's either going to send his angels or he's going to be there in person. It depends <laughs> on how busy he is. But <laughs> <laughs> it's a win-win either way. Yeah, yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, but um, I, I love it, that. It's a it's a transition that's going to be peaceful, and that and actually you could pray for that too. Yeah. You can say, God, I want my death to be peaceful. Mm -hmm. I don't want it to be a horrifying, gut wrenching, miserable, horrible thing. Let me be have a peaceful transition to you. I mean, what have you got to lose? You know, uh, I don't know yet if that worked. I'm praying that, but I think it will. And I, I've, I've seen people who had peaceful deaths, mm -hmm. and they have seen something. Right. I mean, they have seen something. They, they, um, one lady had her eyes closed, you know, eyes closed and almost like in a coma, and then she opened her eyes, and she had this great smile. It's like, <sighs> it's like that. Wow. And, and then she died. And I know That's she saw something beautiful. really great. Yes, and I've heard that a mm -hmm. lot of times. So something great is going to happen when I you die. I believe that. I, I had a letter too. from a viewer who said that her husband, like that, had been not communicative mm -hmm. for some time. And in the last moments, he opened his eyes, but he said, you came. Yes. Oh, I love that. Oh, I love that. I love that. that. Beautiful? Yes, my uncle, my uncle Jack um, died recently, and my aunt uh, said, um, she said, you know, he was, he was basically comatose, mm -hmm. you know? And then he, he did the same thing. He opened his eyes and wow, he, said, he says, look at all those people. Oh. And some of them are angels, he said. Oh my God! I know, and he died and I, this wow. is just recently. And I, I think, oh, you know, there's some good things gonna be happening and yeah. not to fear it, not to fear it. He's gonna be there, mm -hmm. you, you know, to be absent from the body is to be with the Lord. Present That's, with the Lord. Yeah, present I with the Lord. That. Yes, me too. And I'm thinking, 
we're, we're dreading this the death yeah. thing, but he's got something good for us, oh, yeah. you know, so we don't have Fantastic. to be afraid. And I'm going to tell you how you can get a copy of The Power of Praying Through Fear. Fantastic book. It'll make a huge, huge difference. But I recently had a trip um, to Southeast Asia and saw some girls who live in fear every single day. But you know what? We are God's girls, and in his name, we're going to make a difference and see some people literally rescued from the gates of hell. Would you watch this with me? I'm riding in a tuk-tuk um, in the red light district here in Southeast Asia. And it can look, you know, some of them almost look kind of glamorous. You know, the girls are smiling and inviting men to come in and have a drink and when it's daylight and there's no one watching them, their pimps are not watching them. And the difference is unbelievable. Then it's it's not smiles and makeup, and then it's tears and tears and brokenness and hopelessness. Underneath the makeup and the short skirts, there's just a little girl. They're just little girls, like your daughters. This is a place of absolute living hell. There's not one girl in these streets, and I don't care whether she's smiling and calling people in, there's not one girl here who values their life because they think, if you can be sold every night, what are you worth? asked one of the girls that we met today, who on this earth cares for you? And she said, no one. There's no one who cares for me. And we want each one of these girls to know there is a God in heaven who cares for you. Let me tell you, if there's any place where the body of Christ should be showing up and caring for people, it's on these streets of this red light district where these girls are being sold every night, time after time after time. You and I, as God's sons and daughters, we've got to be the ones telling these girls, you have a future and you have a purpose and you have a hope and there is a God who loves you. They need our help and they need it now. Cannot tell you, um what these trips do to my spirit. You know, what you might not know is some of these girls, they are 12 and 13. And you think, maybe you're tempted to think, well, why, why did they get into that? Why are they doing that? Some of these children have absolutely no choice. You know, if they want to make some money. I mean, so many of the girls I work with, they, their parents are in jail or they've left, they're on their own. I met a 12-year-old girl who is the breadwinner for the family. So she goes out at midnight and gathers beer cans when they're thrown out of the clubs. But that's when they are kidnapped. And they'll maybe be brought into a club and somebody says, you know, would you like a hot meal? And they're like, yeah. They don't know it's drugged. And they wake up the next morning um, and they've probably been raped four or five times. And, you know, I love all of our missions here. I do. I love, we put water wells in. We, we give food to kids who are starving. We put little shoes on the feet of children who've never had them. But there's nothing that captures my heart more than our mission, at Life Rescue, where we reach rescue and restore. And let me explain what that means. We go into the villages, way high up into the mountains, where children have never heard of this kind of evil. And we teach them, if a man arrives with a van and wants to give you a better job, run for your life and scream as loudly as you can. But when girls have gone and they've been kidnapped, we have teams that will go in. I mean, they're amazing, some of the best guys on the planet. And they will blow down these doors and they will rescue those girls, literally snatching them from the gates of hell and then restore. We have beautiful places where we can take these girls and say, listen, you're not a number. I walked into one club where all the girls had numbers tattooed to the thighs. And a man would say, I want number 12. They want to say, you're not number 12 to God. You know, you are loved. You, Christ died for you. So this is so important to us. You know, as long as we, as the body of Christ are on this earth, 
You know, who knows when we'll be gone with the Lord. But as long as we are on this earth, we cannot allow this to happen. So here's the great news I have. We have a matching gift at the moment from some of our very faithful partners of $320,000, which means it used to be for $128. That's what it really took to be able to, to physically rescue one girl. And that's too much for some of you. But do you know if you can give $64, our partners will match it. So and with your $64 matched, you will now have the potential to rescue a girl. If you can give 128 matched, you can rescue two. 1,280, which is a lot for some, but it's nothing for some of you. If you can do that, it will be matched to rescue 20 girls. I mean, I've been in both places. I've been in the worst of the worst. I've seen things I will never unsee. And I've seen the difference when they're brought to a place where they can be free to know that there's a God in heaven and I am a child of God. Will you help us do that? Go to your phone, dial that number, give the very best gift possible. I'm going back soon and I want to tell some of these girls, help is on the way. Behind the bright lights, there is a darkness where a world of innocence is lost and abuse runs rampant, scarring the souls of children with no one and nowhere to turn for help. With bodies broken and hopes crushed, these young victims are trapped in a never-ending nightmare. Today, you can shine the light of God's love in this dark world to reach, rescue, and restore these young ones to the life God designed for them to live. With a generous $320,000 matching gift, now your gift of $128 to help rescue a child can be doubled to help two children. Your $64 gift will be matched to help rescue one child from the horrors of human trafficking. And a $32 mission rescue gift will be doubled to $64. And with your donation of any amount, we'll send you the Faith, Hope, Love tea towel set. These beautifully woven hand towels are a wonderful reminder to remain steadfast in faith, hope, and love each day. With your gift of $128 or more, you'll receive the life-giving Proverbs Journal. Bound in genuine leather, this journal is filled with wisdom and daily encouragement from Proverbs, featuring lined pages for your personal notes as you reflect on godly instruction to success in life. Finally, please consider a gift of $1,280, which will now help rescue 20 children, and you may request our beautiful bronze sculpture, Safe in the Shepherd's Arms. Please call, write, or make your gift online. Yes, we can make a difference in Jesus' name. And for any gift at all, I'm going to send you this amazing new book from Stormy, The Power of Praying Through Fear. Can you imagine, Stormy, if every believer got hold of this and began to apply these principles? Oh, I, that would be an answer to prayer. <laughs> it would. I mean, that's, that's why I write these books. Mm-hmm. I want everyone to have one. I want yeah. you know, get it out as much as possible because people are living in the mm-hmm. bondage of fear. Yeah. It's, it's ruining their lives because yeah. it makes you sick. I know. It, it really does. And so they can be set free. So if you want to know how to be set free, Storm, we will be glad to send you Stormy's book. Just ask for that when you give your gift. Um, um, I'm Sheila Walsh, and I just want to say from all of us here at Live Today, thank you so much for joining me, and we'll see you next time. Don't you worry, dear. I'll be the one that you call. Next week, Sarah May explains how she learned to love and forgive her alcoholic mother. Mom, I think you're an alcoholic. And she said, so what? Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.